scary video games are the latest craze to sweep the country. A phenomenon that had to happen when the TV set married the computer. In the future, who knows what we'll be able to do with this. This is a bigger new industry than marijuana. Is that a joint, man? Oh, my God. 16-year-old Kyle Buga Gearsdorf is waking up $3 million richer. You are wrong about... Gaming is eating the world. What does that mean? Available gaming stats indicate that there are 3 billion gamers on Earth. That's just under half of humanity. Globally, gamers spend, on average, 8.5 hours per week gaming. And Chinese gamers clock in a serious 12 hours per week. In 2021, gaming was a $155 billion industry. And that's extremely impressive, but what I'm getting at is something a little bit more subtle when I say gaming is eating the world. We're playing a lot of games, true, and we're spending a shit ton of money in them. But remarkably, people don't recognize that gaming mechanics are baked into all experiences. If you've ever checked your credit score, when you take a class in school, or if you pick a number to stand in line at the DMV, you have experienced the degree to which even the most mundane activities in life are structured like games. For all you sneakerheads and hype beasts out there, when those new Yeezys drop on the confirmed app, you're playing the Adidas game. You're competing against hundreds of thousands of individuals globally and the sneaker bots to secure a scarce asset. So you're wrong about gaming because games are so much bigger than just video, console, mobile, and computer games. The impact of gaming and the gaming industry goes way beyond the screen. My forecast is that the future of the internet is a spatial and immersive internet. It's a three-dimensional future, but that means we'll have to design experiences of immersion and movement in these spaces. So the future is one in which game design and game mechanics will be part of the toolkit of the next generation of minds that will design our daily lives. What's interesting about NFT and blockchain technology is that it is primarily happening in the gaming space. The mechanics of blockchain and NFTs are built on game mechanics and game theory. If you read anything about Vitalik Buterin's founding and the creation of Ethereum, you'll realize that virtual game economies like World of Warcraft were instrumental in his development of Ethereum. When you enter the NFT space, you're entering a world of access points, most of which can and are gamified. Group puzzles, tasks, achievements win a player positioning for a whitelist and access to rare iterations of NFTs. And to be in that club, you've got to play the game. If DAOs and drops resemble games, well, it's because they are. And that's not a bad thing. It's just gaming is bigger than you thought. The future is a spatial one. And the future of gaming is the creation of worlds in which these games can be played. And NFT and blockchain games already exist, and we continue to move in a more utility-focused view of digital assets. The web pages of Web 2 will cede power to the web places of Web 3. So we'll see platforms like Roblox replace browsers like Chrome as our window into these worlds and experiences. The metaverse will be accessed by spatial 3D design, and the days of the 2D feed and timelines are numbered. Game over. It's the worst part of the game. Oh, it's what? Taxes. <laughs>